I'm assuming the card is in here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm assuming it is. Uh, yeah, this is Calcat the Calcatster. And, uh, it's been two months since Space Bridge Episodes 1 and 2, which were spin off of the Robotech 1. And after after negotiations and discussions with other cast members unrelated to the story, we've come up with... I've come up with something that uh, hopefully uh, will make a, uh, a very interesting uh, next half of the uh, Space Bridge. As you know, it was incomplete. It's half of a story. Well, this is going to solve the story arc there that's going on with that. And then we'll get on to another story arc. So, yeah, I have two episodes to solve the story arc, and I, at least as far as I'm concerned. And then it's a 90-minute movie. You put it together, it's 90 minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go and try that and see what it looks like. I think with the bio ship and stuff. And so, uh, Two months ago, I really didn't know what I was doing. And I just said, ooh, let's be mysterious and have this stuff happen from the Robotech thing. Transferring to the Transformer thing without really thinking about what I was going to do. And I don't want to do like Chris Carter and just do a retcon of stuff. So I'm going to do something that isn't a retcon. But that there was going to be a little bit of... There almost has to be a little bit of the future in here. But only a little. Enough to bring the uh, bio ship to 2016, to the beginning of the story. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, and then... So is it the wraparound then? Or is it not really? Um, we're going to do it in such a way that it isn't really. Is what I'm going to do. Uh, so... So we'll see if this actually works. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, we're going to try it out. And it is April 23rd, 2016. We're on the set of Transformers Space Bridge, Episode 3. <laughs> the Bioship Mystery, Part 3 of the uh, series. And we are going to start a scene on the bio-vessel. A vessel that presumably disappeared months ago. And this guy is being an idiot and just fell over. <laughs> okay. Okay, what's going on? Okay. <laughs> Silly Kelly here. On the set of uh, Space Bridge Episode 3. And they have revealed most of what happened to in the Robotech episode. They revealed essentially that the uh, Korg the Invid Simulagent, who was defeated by Scott Bernard in the Invid finale. Because he's an energy being, yeah, his body was destroyed, but he's still an energy being. So he really wasn't killed. He just became energy and did something else. Like Sarah and Ariel have already proved in the in this in the continuity that they can do that. So why couldn't he have done that? Why couldn't he have just changed into energy and flown off? He didn't disrupt all of his energy field. He just shot him out of the sky and blew him up. So he just came back together, hung around, and then messed up the expeditionary force. Probably helped the Hayden Knight Rebels as well, and his father, to destroy the uh, the fleet, which is a little bit like the uh, twisted version of the uh, Star Wars. But not exactly. Now, this would be like if Han Solo went evil and decided to kill everybody. No, Han Solo didn't. But, but I was thinking... Um, so earlier, discussing with them, discussing other random characters and things with some relatives that were visiting, and uh, and tying in like other stuff that had nothing to do with Robotech. But I was thinking at the time, you know, you know, why can't you know something that that like that be a connection in the story? Why can't they just? Uh, there was this discussion about pigs, you know, shoot pigs, <laughs> and. Uh, as in pigs, you know, boars, not, not people, pigs. Um, and uh, I thought that um, 
that why not just like make the story the literal story? Why not just have have it be that there's there's the mystery guy is not all that mysterious. He's one of the other existing characters. He's just been behind the scenes doing stuff, which is consistent with Shadow Chronicles as well, and the Tards of the Shadow and that other scene as well. So Sira is speaking of her own brother, which is kind of cool, like her older brother who has done evil things, which I thought was a cool idea. <laughs> so yeah, he's doing that. A little Star Warsy, yeah, okay, a little bit. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but not giving too much away. No, no. Kylo Ren and the Rey and Star Wars are different. Um, they're not really brother and sister. I think they're cousins. But, yeah. Um, so I thought, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Familial devotion. And, stuff. and I think it's hilarious that young Rick Hunter meets old Rick Hunter. That's, that's funny. <laughs> but, yeah, a uh, little bit the Transformers do about that. But, yeah, yeah they, they, they met in the last act. So, yeah, this one is more of a G.I. Joe one. It's straight-up G.I. Joe's. There's very little Transformers in this one act. So, uh, yeah, so not much more to say about it other than, than that's what we that's what I filmed tonight. Um, on the inspiration of uh, Rick, of uh, Eric Patchen. Uh, incidentally, this guy does look like Rick, um, ex-husband of Yvonne, his sister, <laughs> Her, Erica's father. He really does. He look, looks like Rick. See? And he's Rick Hunter, so that's funny. Um, so Rick Hunter and meets his younger self, who is actually Mutt from G.I. Joe, Rick Hunter. There he's not Rick, but but he looks like him. But but he's Rick. Neither of these guys are actually Rick, ironically. Too many Rick's Rick and Marty. No, that's something else. Oh uh, Doc, ah uh. But yes, um here we have the cat scratching something. And anyway, so you don't really need the part about Rick, but but yeah, he looks like like my sister's ex-husband. I guess you can mention that, but it's not relevant. Um, this guy sort of looks like um, him, so Mutt looks a little like him. So he's younger himself, you see. <laughs> yes. Uh, sure. No one's going to watch the making footage anyway, come on. But you can cut some of the Ricks out, but this is Rick Hunter. And you can cut the familial part out, but, but, but the um, the point was to the point that was to uh, try to figure out what was going on two months ago with the story, and apparently the bad guy has broken his father out of prison. The bad guy in the story, so <laughs> so we'll find out, or the guy escaped on his own because because he might have. So yeah, so isn't that neat? Um. <laughs> But yeah, isn't that neat? So yeah, trans Transformers, um, Trans Base Bridge, third episode, and it's all GI Joes. <laughs> oh yeah, and they pull them out of suspended animation on the ship. So it's the same universe, even though it's slightly different. And as and as Louis Nichols here explained, it's not a different dimension. Because they would burst apart and they would match. It's just, it's a parallel universe. It's a parallel timeline. Slightly altered by events that happened. Yeah, and Louis here would know, because he's Louis. Because he's Dr. Louis Nichols. Actually, this is Dusty. It's funny, because like, okay, let's say who these guys are. Here we have, here we have Space Shot. It's Rick Hunter. We have Mutt, Junkyard, actually. Mutt was, or no, he's Mutt, Junkyard. We have, um, we have Spirit, Spirit, Iron Knife, Spirit. We have, I think that this is not Breaker. I kept saying this is Breaker. I think this is Dial Tone. Dial Tone, the movie, movie Dial Tone. Um, yeah, there were like two of them. And this, of course, is, this, of course, is Roadblock from G.I. Joe 2. And it is also, and what's cool is he is also The Rock, or something. Is he The Rock? Or is he Diesel or something? He's actually an actor. This guy is funny. 
And then we have, then we have, um, see the rock or Vin Diesel or I may have that wrong. And here we have, uh, here we have uh, transform, uh, not transformers. We have, we have GI Joe, Scarlet. Yeah. Or it might be Lady J. I think it's supposed to be Lady J, but it's Scarlet. And this is a GI Joe from the the newer series, the. Uh, 2012 2013 series that was um that was uh, it wasn't called renegade yeah gi joe renegades it was it was the tim 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 series the one he was doing <laughs> it wasn't bad it, it was kind of cheesy in parts but it wasn't bad um yeah you know he didn't actually do it because if he did it would have been better <laughs> but no, it was based on retaliation, so it was Renegades. It was basically the A-Team with G.I. Joe. And, uh, although it had some nice episodes, it was kind of cheesy. And we have Dusty. Dusty. And this is actually another, just, uh, this is a Scarlet. Ski Scarlet from the, uh, from the special edition episode. Uh, I think this is from the Mass Device but it's like a it's like a special edition 20th anniversary one. Yeah. I opened it and I played with it. So there it is. I shouldn't have played with it. Anyway, kept one of them in the box. Anyway, we have a we have a cat. A cat on the floor. And I like that I can see myself. Narcissism is beautiful. Just so you know, the other niece that was on the set, uh, we had Erica and we had Sarah on the set, and uh, neither of them want to have a YouTube channel. They, they're too embarrassed by channels at this point. But I am not, as, as I pointed out. Um, I have a channel where I act in nuts. Apparently one of them did a uh, eating challenge thing without filming it, of uh, eating ice cream. I won't say which niece. And uh, I said, why don't you put that on YouTube? That would be awesome. I want to see that. I want to see myself barfing. I uh, totally do that. <laughs> except when I do like a fail blog thing I don't fail so yeah except for bloopers but yeah I'm sure I'll watch some of the dailies and they'll be back but at least this is interesting that I was able to figure this whole thing out it took a while to figure out how to tie in okay the, the character of Reinhardt died in the Robotech story of which the space bridge is a sort of a Cinematic Universe expansion thing. So Robotech, the Robotech thing is sort of a, uh, the Robotech one is sort of, or sort of like, okay, we're going to reboot, a, a, not really reboot, but we're going to do a trans tech thing, you know, homage to Robotech, bring Rick Hunter home and go from there. That's what we did. And we have this Reinhardt thing and the Robotech thing and the robot thing and the robot having her emotions wiped and whatever. Didn't really know what we were doing. I just filmed it and did it and wrote the script later, which probably wasn't a good idea. Didn't write any script here either, but it's stream of consciousness. It's a different kind. It's it's um this is a different this is almost um well it's stream of consciousness, but it's also very much the old school stuff. And this is the old set from the original trans. We are in the room where thirty years ago, at this time, I was making the trans transformer series right here in this room. It's awesome. Right here, right now, <laughs> and, and yes, thirty years ago, and uh, <laughs> and yeah, sixteen years old. Um, yeah, so <laughs> fifteen and a half. Well, actually, I was fifteen and a half. I was not quite sixteen. Apparently, <laughs> didn't realize that at the time. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, the the trans series, uh, yeah, because there were too many reruns, so I wanted more. Uh, Mark's Cards and I later made a, a uh, Transformers uh, reboot of that called Trans Tech, Transformers Week Robotech, and brought the STF-3 home. And now this is 13 years after that, and uh, we decided to do a another one. Have the Transformers spinoff thing during concurrently with the Star Trek thing we're doing with Carmara as well. Why not film this at the same time? And uh, on Cal Cat Show, so. so, but we hadn't thought of anything for two months. We're trying to figure out how to how to bring everyone together. And sometimes reunions are helpful to come up with ideas of together. 
Because <laughs> he's going to say, well, what happens if the bad guy is just there? And he's just the other bad guy we just didn't know was in the room. And it's that old cliche from mystery novels, which is similar to sci-fi novels. Whenever you have like, a whodunit, it's the one you don't expect. There's, there's, there's always, there's four different kinds of whodunits, just like there's four. In the four different kinds of sci-fi, it's either man versus man, man versus nature, man versus God, or God versus God. And, and the sci-fi story, and there's all different variations of that theme. Uh, with a murder mystery, it's the butler did it, the one you'd expect. It's the jealous person that you didn't expect. It's the what a twist. It was the guy that was only on the screen for two seconds twist. Or it's the or it's the completely baffling like you didn't see it coming out of left field, what a twist in Mate Schleimann Lama Ding Dong Indy. Of it. before in Mate Schleimann, that was the ending of murder she wrote in many cases. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and medium from years ago. But yeah uh, in this case it's the one that appears briefly in in my Robotech story. Go back and watch it. It's that ending. It's not the what a twist ending. I hint that it's actually Korg. If you go back and watch the the Sentinel story. Because the green dude who is the father guy looks a little bit like Korg's mecha. And also because who else would it be? Edwards is dead. He died on Optera. They said that in the story. Um, <laughs> Edwards, we know, is dead from the Fresh Child Rising. Can't be him. Uh, the first law of assassination is kill the assassin. So somebody got rid of Edward uh, Reinhardt really quick. It wasn't any of the main people. That wouldn't make sense. It wasn't Sparks. That wouldn't make sense. It was the guy in the green standing in the back room doing the set to who, who said, why don't we coerce them? That's who it was. <laughs> and when he was in disguise as a G.I. Joe, he was trying to coerce his sisters to be evil. <laughs> so all along, actually until tonight, we didn't know, but, but actually we did. Look back at that old footage and go, oh, that. I was reading the script. I said, like, that's who that guy's got to be. That's who he is. Okay. That's who he is. That totally makes sense that he would still be around because he's an energy being. He can like, do that. We haven't seen him yet. Who knows what transformer form he will take. Ooh. But if you look at the wall, the back wall with the transformers, showing them all of them, I don't want to give everything away, but there is an extra one there. That's a transformer there. That's there. On the wall, it hasn't been shown yet. He's, he's, he's going to be the one. Yeah, one of those guys. <laughs> but yeah, there's not as much Space Bridge in, in Space Bridge Episode 3. Because uh, yeah, I wanted to do the G.I. Joe part. Just see how in Episode 4, how they ally with the Transformers and what they do. And whether Optimus Prime and the Autobots are going to be kind of hard-pressed to stop the energy being who has come to the universe to decimate it. Because we like the word decimate, which means to cut into ten pieces. Yes. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Um, trans Transformers. Space Bridge. In the old set. Right here on this spot. This is this is where the space shuttle toy crashed. This is where the SDF one was. The SDF Autobot and other stuff is going on. Bed was right over there, so who knows where that was going on? Down on the floor, was the ship. But I, I had built this ship. I, I, I had covered it in lacquers and paints and tape and stuff and styrofoam backing with stuff. I intended to build this aircraft carrier because my uncle Bill, who's still around, uh, he's just very old. He used to build these well, ships out of balsa. I also learned the techniques of balsa and model making. Not necessarily from watching him, but but I, I learned them again you know, afterward. My own versions and made balsa ships in on in, in the same in a similar vein to Uncle Bill, who built very pristine models and backgrounds, backdrops and things. 
and I had built a aircraft carrier because he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to build modern military craft. He was into building boats for the Duluth Museum. So they often looked like long oil carriers and fishing boats and things like that. I think that website still rang. Go look that up. Bill Galinsky. Uncle Bill, you can go look that up and see his boats. I think the museum is still there and I think the boats are too. So yeah. Um, I never got any of his boats though. I don't think. Might have a little one somewhere. <laughs> but yeah. Um, don't know what happened to it. It's around somewhere. But yeah, I have mostly balsa transformer things. Uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and I built this aircraft carrier model, which I then later rebuilt in Carta 2 in 1994. And that one wasn't floatable, but the original one was. The original was, um, was actually, you could put it in water and float it. And as I said in the commentary on trans, the Transformer parodies, these were parodies. They weren't, they weren't meant to be sold or anything. Just watched more Transformers. It's fun. Action figures. And um, and I intended to put that in the pool, their pool down the street, and float it. Good thing I didn't, because it would have sank. Would have been funny, though. <laughs> probably would have sank. But, yeah. It might have floated, like, probably what would have happened is the styrofoam part, which was on the back, that would have floated, and the rest of it would have gone straight down. So it would have gone... It would have been, like, like, floating like a styrene thing melting in the down into the water. Destroyed. Totally destroyed. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, all those other early card I got destroyed. Well, I have to come up with new card. That's, that's something we're, we're considering more card for uh, 2016. We meant to build them every three or four years or so, but it always takes us a little longer than. Oh man, I farted again. <laughs> No, no, it always takes us a little long to build the, the Transformers over the years, and uh, yeah. So, who did? So, on the set, and the cats are playing in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I decided to do some filming and do a little Robotech. Well, G.I. Joe, technically. With some Robotech stand-ins for Robotech. And of course, the there's always a hilarious gag here at the end. So he's like, he's like, oh, Rick Hunter, I have always desired myself because I'm not narcissistic. Hmm. The word narcissist came up during the discussion. It's funny. Because yes, from a narcissist. It's funny. And and now we have Rick Hunter. Kissing himself. Mm. Ah. The only one I can truly love is not Lisa. Lisa Hayes is myself. I love myself. Love. <laughs> He's all like, mm. Ew, and then this like sensor bar pops up like, in front of him. And see what they're doing back here. Sensor <laughs> bar. Oh my god. Feature is a child. I think I should treat it as such. It's not at all weird that a grown man is playing with G.I. Joe's. It's therapeutic. <laughs> it's like army men, you know, they have army men. Yeah, actually, more people should play with their toys. They would, they would get back to their childhood and whatever. And there's a fly. Oh. <sighs> this is supposed to be Lady J. But it's Scarlet. They made her a ninja in the remake. She's not supposed to be a ninja. It's stupid. <laughs> I guess in the comics she became a ninja later, but that's kind of dumb. Yeah, she's just she just kicks ass. She's got a crossbow and stuff. She's not really a ninja. She's sort of an archer. She's more like yeah, she's more like Hawkeye. 
But Marvel. Were there anything else? <laughs> of course, the G.I. Joes and Cobra couldn't shoot worth a damn. Because their laser guns were all... Choo, 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 choo. So why do they even bother having guns? They can't hit anything. <laughs> they would hit their cars now and then. In the movie, they hit each other. <laughs> The only way they could hit Duke was to hit him with a giant snake attack thing. Hit him in the heart. Which I uh, put him in a coma, which was strange. Wouldn't have put him in a coma, it would have killed him. Actually, the original director said, no, no, we killed him. We just had to change it at the last minute because Hasbro said, no, you can't kill Duke. It upset all the little kitty fans. It's like, I didn't care. We could have killed him. We just would have brought him back later anyways. <laughs> It's a cartoon. They can bring it back. Like how in Transtech, I just said, oh, there are different Cobras and G.I. Joes. It's just a different group. They're, yeah, the younger team. That's all you need to do. <laughs> it's like James Bond. He keeps coming back as a different guy. Just say James Bond is a code name, and it's just a different guy. Yeah. He's been programmed, to, like brainwashed, to be James Bond. It's not really. Korg. I have not figured out what a Korg's human form is going to be yet, but I'm fairly certain he was in the background during some of those scenes on the ship. Just not sure if he was the guy that said we should coist him or not. I suspect he was probably the Korg guy with the helmet on. They couldn't see his face. His face is probably all screwed up from Scott Bernard shooting him. Well, it wouldn't be really because he's an energy being, but maybe he's just being mean. Too bad Scott Bernard's not around to fight him. Hmm. <laughs> but I couldn't bring everybody to 2016. That would have been a little strange. Or something else. Yeah, so the Joes basically took the bio ship for some reason at the end of the last story. <laughs> why not? They took the ship in the Matrix. Oh. Why would they do that? Oh well, we'll find out. Oh, well. Okay, five minutes left on the camera, and that was it. Um, here we are on the set of Transformers Space Bridge 2 and 3 and 3 and 4. 3 and 4. So we'll see the dailies and things, and then in a couple of days we'll probably go, Oh my gosh, something's wrong! No, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It's, it's linear. It's just a lot of a lot of giant robot fighting and stuff. Kind of an extension of the very last few seconds of the end of the last story into a full what happened to the city and all that. Cool. Anyway, so yeah. Let's see. Okay, what this is is footage of them going to Optimus Prime prior to the big city fight. The scene is meant to be prior to the city fight, and they go to Optimus Prime to ask the Autobots permission to uh Send the city out to fight the, the, the Decepticons, to fight the Invid. And they've rescued Rick Hunter and they explain this. So we got them. Ah, April 26, 2016. Set of Trans Tech. Uh, well, not Trans Tech, actually, uh, Transformers Z Robotech uh, sequel. Sort of, sort of follow up. Um, the gag here. It's very similar to the one in Trans 2, in which the, the, the law of diminishing averages is reversed. And diminishing little bad guy here. Bad guy becomes bad guy, becomes bigger bad guy, becomes biggest bad guy, so that he can fight the city. Metroplex. So basically, the gag being, the, the joke being that, um, uh, the Hadon's friend here, or Hadon, no, Hadon's son, as a horde, has uh, inf infested this Transformer Decepticon guy, and he is, um, he is Doom. He's basically the Alicom Doom and the other ones. So, tell me for a second. <laughs> so, 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 basically what, basically, what's going on in the last half hour of, of the story that, putting all this together, you get two movies, uh, is that... We find out who we found out who killed Reinhardt in the last act. We found out that it was Korg, and that Korg is an energy being like Ariel and Sira, 
And he's been zapping around and stuff, and he helped his father out with the last episode, with the Robotech thing that happened, and now we're in Transformer Land. So in the Transformer Land with the G.I. Joes, we, we come across him, too. Now, we'll connect all that with a Transformer scenario that will basically be done in roughly 22 minutes. So, the giant robot part, which is the end of usually a classic trans episode from back in the 80s and later in the more ambitious trans tech in the 2000s, and now it's the 21st century, uh, there's another giant robot fight. Now, as we did with the last uh, story, the Space Bridge pilot, and of which this is us being allowed to finish the story arc of the pilot. Uh, as with that, with the giant Devastator, these are the giant robot cities that have come to fight. Now, of course, the scale is completely off because they're toys. So we have to do something else. And, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Uh, the, this is very similar to a scene in Trans 2 in which the Trans 2 Intergalactic Guardians from 1990s, 1990s, sequel, in which we had a bunch of the robots dead, and, uh, well, they were going to die. They all fought, and all the big cities came together, they all fought, and they ended up dead. This is sort of an homage to that. It's also an homage to, what's, this is a remake of Battle of the Alicom, so it's an homage to that as well. Uh, Alicom does, does reappear in this, in this story, and in, in the second half, of course. But she does not inhabit the robots. She uh, lets Cord do it, which is a little bit of a twist. Uh, you're never actually going to see Battle of the Alicom because it used copyrighted music, so among other things, and was really hard to watch. So if you've watched Trains 2 and the major boss battle with the robots, that's pretty much the re-rake of that. Now, we've, now we're doing an Alicom story where we have thrown in the Alicom and, uh, and basically done this version of the Alicom story. So we're just rehashing our old stuff. But since you haven't seen it, it's all going to be new to you. <laughs> so basically the, the boss battle is a, a, a gag kind of thing here. So we're going to shoot some of that and then graft it to the end of the story that we have not yet shot. Hopefully it will work. Here we go. Whoa. Okay. Devastator. Devastating scope. Okay, what this is going to be is basically reshoots and add-ons to, well not reshoots, but add-ons to the uh, end of the Decepticon, okay, the, the Decepticon scene. The big city has fallen on the other robots. These guys are, if they were to scale, would be really tiny, they'd be like ants. This would be a city that's fallen on this guy. He's crushed, utterly, completely destroyed, so he's gone. He's crushed, and he's crushed, and so I'm just going to get a shot here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, <laughs> had to put this in here. Uh, this is the end of the scene. Uh, this is a two-day shoot, just two episodes, real quick. Uh, they're very uh, hardly any set, very minimalistic. Uh, it required just giant robots fighting and then cut back to the smaller ones. Um, it'll be interesting to edit later, but uh, it's basically just two days. Uh, it was actually the 24th and 25th, not the 23rd. Um, the story was thought up on the 23rd, but yeah. So... The premise is that we just wanted to not necessarily do what we did with Robotech and uh, the, the, the Robotech one, where we had to fix stuff and go through it and, and add clunks. Uh, the, the, the 45 minutes worked. What we're adding here is the next 45 minutes. We're adding uh, the, the rest of the story arc because we weren't going to go on any further than another two episodes with it anyway, with the Hadon arc. 
So we just decided, let's end that, and let's have the escalating robot battle thing, which is the end of Battle of the Alicom, which is this is a remake of. Uh, and since no one's seen it, it's going to be all new. And we did that. So, so yeah, we had the escalating battle, and the robot's getting bigger and bigger and bigger until, until Fortress fights Metroplex, which is crazy, uh, insane. And, and a nod to Batman v Superman as well. Although we thought of it first years ago with the uh, cities fighting each other. Uh, back then it was the SDF Autobot and the SDF 3, but uh, here it's, uh, and here it's, and then it was later some other Autobots fighting other evil Autobots. And there was a, a Doom robot who who was a, a Scorponok just without a head. Uh, that's in here too, but it's very brief. Doom basically just says a bunch of stuff and then gets his butt kicked. Um, <laughs> he doesn't really do anything. Uh, because you want to solve it in 45 minutes, you got to you got your two 20 minute, 22 minute episodes, then it's over. So, so it's just you know all together it'll be four episodes of Space Bridge, the uh, spaceship mystery. Um, the, the, so that's cool, Space Bridge. Um, yeah, so that was a wrap. And this little scene on the end of these dailies uh, is the scene that glues the two together. This is the opening salvo of, I guess, part two, where um, they ally with the Autobots in Megatron. And so it's a little Tell Our One thrown in there, a little bit of Tim and Jim's Tell Our Lore One chucked in there for a, for a little bit of fun. And there was a giant robot fight in that one, too. So very similar to the to this. We just, we just did Tell Our One. Hey, guys, finally got that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it took us... Uh, yeah, we wrote that in 80, 87 or 88, so it uh, took us this long to put that together uh, correctly with a with a budget, such as it is. The budget in that, we paid for it ourselves. So I paid for it myself. So, yeah, it, it's a budget, but it, on a budget in that, we paid for it ourselves. So it's not making a profit. This is going to go online. You're going to watch it for free. YouTube. The music and all the sets and everything are, are ours. Uh, these toys are made by Hasbro and mostly Hasbro and Takara and uh, you know, here's Skyfire. But uh, yeah, and they've they've they fought the fight. So now we're in the 2016 period stuff and uh, expanded on the very end of the movie with the other stuff explaining throughout. I think it's gonna work. Really, really, we just shot through it like. Just went through it like, so this is this gonna work? Let's put it all together and see if it works. A minimalistic story and set and everything, and like the Trans Two series when it got toward the end and we ran out of sets and started filming dresser drawers and stuff. Yeah, uh, we could have built more sets for this, been a little more ambitious. But I don't think we need to be because it's just. It's, it's conveyed in what's going on in the action. And yeah, we didn't show any transformations of Transformers, which is kind of funny. But uh, but at least we did all of the, hit all the right points, like having Skyfire get flattened and somebody else get flattened and having Devastator do some kick butt stuff. And yeah, so it's all the points. Uh, if we want to do other trans tech stories in the future of some kind, yeah, we'll, we'll do them. But I don't think we'll be doing Hadon again. We wanted to wrap up Hadon. Unlike a lot of other fan film stories where they introduce some new villain person and they just keep going and going and they don't end it. Uh, I don't like it when, have, when a movie's never completed and they don't end where the villain's going uh, and, and come up with a solution. And this one does. So, so we came up with an elegant way to have him set back um, and have everything be okay. Uh, having the space bridge even there and all that was a little problematic, but if we imply that in the second half, the queen lady, the princess lady, didn't actually transport the ship very far, but it was like a temporal problem that happened that stranded it and jumped it just two months into the future. So, so the ship is rediscovered and, uh, and it's now, so 2016. So. And then, and then the, um, things happen. They lie with the Autobots. Everything works out. And we get to see a giant Metroplex toy. Cause, and we get to see a giant Metroplex toy because, yes, 30th anniversary Metroplex toy. Yes. 
That thing, I was surprised it stood up for as long as it did. Because its legs are not very well built. But it stood up for the rest of the evening. After the shoot, it stood up there for a while. We left it there. No, I was surprised it stood up that long. I was afraid it was going to crash down and explode. and Well, not explode, but fall apart. And Yeah, so... Yeah, that's it. So, that's the end of the shoot for tonight. And uh, anything embarrassingly glaring to fix, so we'll fix it later. <laughs> yeah. Hello and howdy. So here's Clint Cowpoke on the set. Mm -hmm. They called me again to do do my magic to this here adventure. Trans Tech. Apparently, well, whatever this is. Robe Tech movie. All right. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm adding the humor and Autobots and stuff and clearing up the invid fights and stuff and all that. So I'm basically doing clearing up footage, basically, on the set. Uh, mainly a lot of close-ups of G.I. Joe's, invids, Megatron, the thing about the cannon, that kind of thing. And I'm uh, putting it all together to make it match the, the city footage. It doesn't need to match completely. Um... Uh, scratch the part where the Invid Queen shows up on Metroplex's shoulder. That just don't look right at all. It 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 really doesn't. Uh, it it's not the right scale, and nothing is right in that shot. The only way you can do that is is put her against a blue screen. If you want to do that scene, put her against the blue screen, and have her just show up on the blue screen with a thing behind it, because. Yeah, because it, otherwise it don't look like anything. Also, the Megatron part where he goes, I'm going to shoot Korg with my fusion cannon. He's giving away what he's going to do. That'd be like being in an Old West shootout and going, I'm going to shoot him with my six gun right now. And it's got six bullets in it. It's like, don't tell him what he's going to do. Just do, He should just do it. <laughs> so, like, you know, so, yeah, we'll, we'll fix up some other things. Make the scenes a little better. Uh, make the continuity a little better. Uh, so this is sort of a, it's reshoots, but it's also going to be um, throughout the the picture itself. Uh, they all of the all the stuff that matches the transformers to the action that's going on, and the city's fighting and that kind of stuff. So a lot of reaction shots, basically a lot of close ups. Let's do it. Warg, on the planet. Warg is down here on the planet. He spends a little more time bragging than he did in the other scene. Because we want him to be more with it, other than just behind a wall, like just, and then he gets killed. We want him to have more of some something going on. There's got to be something going on where those two cities are in the air. So here we go. That, oh, so yeah, the placement of that scene was a scene before the uh, cities start fighting. Right, right about there. So we're gonna have some reaction shots of cities fighting now. To join up with the other footage. So gonna redress this a little bit. Okay. Now, at the end of the movie, the shawarma scene, don't put that in there. Just don't use that. It's stupid. Uh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, what this is, is going to be reactions to the city's fighting. And uh, the Transformers nearly getting stomped on by their own guys. Well, the fighting's going on. So this is going to be sort of, sort of comic reactions. Because basically yeah, the other Transformers aren't in the story at all. So I decided to put all of them in it and have them doing crazy shit. Stuff is going on over there. Yeah. Pur beast, look the pur beast, the the Abra pur beast. Hi, Abra pur beast. Oh my God, it's the pur beast. It's the Abra pur beast. Hello, Abra. Oh no, she's destroying it all. Okay, at one point, this guy transmutated into into the other guy, and that's where the other scene opened, and I think all of that footage is fine, but we wanted to give back the Decepticon Matrix to Megatron, because that was not a story arc we wanted to mess with, we were just screwing around, so, <laughs> yeah, we were messing around with that one, yep, <laughs> we weren't really going to do anything with that, oh. Oh, we had to end this in 20 minutes. Not in 50 minutes. So, yeah. Um, we probably are over that. Just, but, yeah. Um, mm. So. This is a, it's 
put it in. It moved over a little bit. Oh God, no! So, that clears it up a little bit. That clears it up a lot, actually. We have, uh, I have fixed it so things work better. And, uh, and, um, then did a few reshoots. Kind of gelled everything together, had some reaction shots, stuff like that. Uh, just, just to get a little more flavor. Um, and, yeah, and, and uh, that last scene is Megatron's retreat shot again. So when he says Megatron's retreat, that's before Autobots transform and roll out. That's where he put that. So, yeah, so we have them all back together again. Everything's back to normal and they're back where they need to be. Because the hate on the story arc kind of fizzled and we well, let's just figure out a way to end it in two more episodes. How about that? <laughs> so we did. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> it wasn't going to be a recurring character in all of it, just those, these episodes. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, so there you go. Um, yeah. That's it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this is this is a scene pickups with Clint Cowpoke and Cow Cat, and we're on the set here of Trans Tech. Yep, and we're gonna do scene pickups, so we're gonna do just jump right into it. Uh, this is gonna be basically the opening scene of this two-part Space Bridge finale of this section, uh, the Hadon section episode. This is a scene involving the prison complex. And we're going to do it. Okay, this is a scene of the Autobot. They're heading, they're going to head to the Autobot base. That's Sierra and Ariel. Discussing Korg. But they don't know if it is. They're just guessing. This is that explanation. They know that he clouds memories. I just went over that. And, uh, yeah. So we do that. So these are some questions that I'm going to answer. The story, the second half here. Uh, assuming this is all going to be about 16 minutes, roughly, of footage that's added to this to make it 44 minutes long. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping it will be. Why does what Hadon hand back the Matrix? Will be the question, and then I'm going to lock in the scene and do the scene immediately on the question. Okay, the next question is, why does the Regis decide to have Korg killed? Block scene. Okay, what is the Hayden Eight cult leads to? Why is he moved to the Red Square? Well, he's he's moved in that scene after they shot the guy, so that's what's going on. So, same spot, but it's going to be Hadon moving around in the human form. How is the Regis going to prevent their escape? Yeah, the transition with her already a human when she's talking to the mother. That's when she changed to a human. So take this transition and put it just before she talks to her mother. So that Jetfire getting fixed, we already know she's back in human form. And now she's going to turn later. Yeah. Okay. Assuming I'm testing this new card. Uh, to replace it anyway, even though we lost the old one. Testing the new card. Let's see what it does. All right, I'm going to stop it. Okay, what this is going to be, and I'm going to start recording during the intro here, is the Megatron and Sierra, just after they've blown up the, the, the brother, they've killed Korg, Megatron is going to turn to Sierra, and he's going to say something to the effect of his plan. Let's show, see a little light on them, something more like, something cool is going on, okay, that's better. So, yeah, so they... So he's going to tell her that a Decepticon can control the Matrix, and that and that Hadon shouldn't have given it to him. Heaven, Hadon shouldn't have given it up. And she's a Decepticon, so she's all, oh, I see. Ooh, and Megatron essentially tells her that, and then she figures it out, that all she's got to do to control Hadon is use the power of the Decepticon Matrix to do the triumvirate thing, then that scene makes sense. It's like, oh, okay, Megatron gives the Matrix to her willingly because she, he's going to borrow it. She can't take it with her, and, and he warns her about that. So that's what this is going to be, and I am going to pause it.
No. Ah. Okay, yeah, so briefly on. So, yeah, so this is technically day five, but we're treating it as the end of day four. Uh, the I just wanted to convey that the end of the story, where the invid lady does what she was doing, and, and Korg at the end, is not so much a mysterious reveal of, like, oh, Hadon must have escaped again. Did he, did he zap her while they weren't looking? No. I wanted to convey that, no, what's going on is that Megatron gives the Matrix temporarily to the Decepticon girl, and she uses the Matrix adding to the triumvirate scene. And then the Invid Queen decides, yeah, I have to really use all of my powers to stop him, to keep him from going in. So she ultimately sacrifices herself to stop him completely and blast him into the other universe. So he is going to be gone. So unless he figures out a way to get out of the wherever Phantom Zone he's been sent, yeah, it, it is not a setup for a sequel. It is the story arc is done at this point. Absolutely. So there you go. <laughs> uh, just because, well, too much of hate on is not a good thing. <laughs> uh, you know, I just wanted to wrap it up in that story arc because otherwise it was like, eh, are you doing that? You know, you do that. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, yeah. Ah, stopped it again. I didn't mean to do that. I keep stopping it. Okay, here, the next, um, this, this was just, like, probably a minute of dialogue. So, let's go on to some other stuff here, uh, with the Robotex. And I'm gonna pause it. No, I'm not gonna pause it. I'm not gonna pause it. Because I want to do, <laughs> I want to get these guys who have not been really featured in anything. They've just been mentioned, and they're not on the screen very much. So let's get them doing something interesting for about a minute or a minute and a half and that's that's it then. it's the two minutes that we need we had two and a half minutes of the other take but it's not two and a half minutes it's a minute so if you cut everything out so we've got Hunter and Lancer and Lunk this scene is going to be much later to match up with the other footage. This scene is going to be after Rick Hunter and crew have officially going to return and the Korg thing. So that's what's going on here. Um, I'm not sure if Hunter is in this scene, but maybe he should be. No, he shouldn't be. Okay. This is going to be immediate. Um, no, no, no. I'm going to include him. This is, this is. They've, they've arrived, and they're going to go to the meeting, and Hunter is there in the background. And action. So we're going to do something here. No, make Dusty look in the right way. Come on, Dusty. You frackin' frickin' fricker. Look the right way. Don't be all moping like you're sad or something. Come on. Your back is broke. What the... Wrong with now, I have, uh, what I'm doing here is I decided to use the set from last night that we didn't film on, and, and uh, on the 29th here, next day, and I wanted to convey something about the robots, the, the Transformers. The, it wasn't that it was unclear in the last two acts, and I'm writing the, you know, the, the, the official version and all that already anyway, it doesn't need these two minutes, and it's not really for padding. It it, it just clarifies two or three little par parts there. It's very abrupt that Rick Hunter goes to see Max. I thought that you know he hasn't mentioned hardly at all in the last in the second act, and then he suddenly there he goes to see Max. I thought it'd be fun to do like some like a, a side back to that just for a minute or less than a minute and a half. It doesn't need to be there, but it would help the story. It's not really filler, but it is. Um, and then they, the part about the Transformers is uh, the two Transformers. To show that there are more Transformers in the room concerned about what's going on. Because otherwise it looks like, well, it's just a few, what, four or five of them really there. And why are some of the Decepticons and Autobots working together? Having some of them explain that helps the story a little bit, I think. So, yeah. And I look sardonic and half lit and stuff. <laughs> I am Strava gives me a shot. 
No, that was Mark's cards. But, but yes, uh, that was the other guy. Yeah, and they had to address what happened as well involving the um, the Invid Queen. Essentially, like, sacrificing her son and then realizing, oh, well, it's probably dumb. Even if he's a bad guy, all right, I'll do it too. Which is fucked. <laughs> it's messed up. But yeah, she probably would do that because she's an invid. Because she's, because yeah, she thought her special child was tainted, and she's all about like invid purity or something or something tyrannical like that. <laughs> the tyranny from the beginning of the story. But yeah, uh, so yeah, she's she's evil. I mean, she's still evil. It's not like the ending of Deep Space Nine where the changeling has a change of heart because Odo touched her. Because Odo touched her a million times before nothing happened. In this case, no, they touched her, but it didn't do anything. She's still evil. She's still a bad guy. She still does what she does because of that. And so that's, you know, she sees, yeah, she's an anti-hero bad guy. She never becomes really a good guy. She's just not as bad as Hadon and, and, and Kork. And Syrah and Ariel are not as bad as Hadon and Kork either. But they're practically Decepticons, so it makes sense that Ciro would become a Decepticon for a while as the Alicom. Although in the original, she wasn't. Anyway, so in the original, it was just we were making fun of somebody from our high school, and we had her as a Transformer, which is kind of mean, but that's what it was originally. Just some girl from my high school. So, yeah. Psst. This version, much better. Uh, making it actually canon with Robotech and Transformers. Well, this version, this universe. And next up, Combiner Wars. Not sure when that'll happen. Probably have to have a slightly scripted story for that. But the next one is going to be something to do with the Combiners. I haven't figured it out yet. Mm. So I don't have any from the new Robots in Disguise cartoon. I can't do that. They were really cheap toys, the cartoon remake. Uh, and I didn't buy any of them, so <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any Transformers Prime guys really either. I have some, but not really a lot. I have some of the Predacons and some of the other ones, some of the bigger ones. I liked it, but a lot of them burned in their box. And some of the jets and things. I could do some of them, but not all of them. I did collect the cool ones. I like I like to collect the cool ones. <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah. we still collect Transformers. It's still relevant, as Grimlock said. Me still relevant. Rawr. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna go. And yeah, this is a wrap. Uh, basically, end of cut. End of Transsex Space Bridge 2. Space Bridge Episode 3 and 4. And just two minutes that don't need to be extra if you don't want them, but they're there. If you want them, they'd be in the second episode at the beginning and on the end. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> so the set is still set up from last night. Uh, the movie is 43 minutes long now, the, the trans tech movie. So what I would like to do is to close it out on day 7 as I would like to go into the room and shoot just about 30 seconds to a minute of reaction shots from the robots. Just reaction shots. No, no audio, just reaction shots while the fighting is going on. So this would be in the first act during the boss battle. And this would be reactionary shots that would um, go on to the other other scenes. Uh, and it needs them. Because they're saying, oh, frightful ruin, things are happening. And yet the robots are just kind of joking in the other scenes about it when there should be more of a sort of, oh, you know, there should be maybe grunting or something. But, but yeah, just, just reaction shots of things happening. Otherwise, it just looks like they're grappling and nothing's going on. That'll give you the last minute, and then I'll make it 44 minutes on the Transformer thing. I think that would help it a lot, a lot make it better. And, and then the second half is good. You don't need to do anything with that. But I want to, I want to go and do uh, the two minutes that were added last night were good. Uh, but uh, but you needed those actually. You needed those those two minute and a half of bonus just because that wasn't a bonus. That was that was a plot hole you had to fix. So that was important to have that in there. Those two those two moments. Also, uh, yeah. So do that.
Okay, just to clarify this when you edit the minute or so of reaction shots and, and whatnot, to expand upon the robots saying that their leaders were going to die and whatever, they're all standing together, just to clarify that, uh, this is during the during the the boss fight. Two cities are going at it. The big cities are going at it. And the reason they this guy the other two were hanging out together and the other ones becomes a little more clear in that and then we get a snarky comment from Megatron saying shit's going going down and then we get but he's not directing it at them. He's just saying shit's going down cuz because he doesn't like the idea of an alliance, but he's okay with it as long as they're defeating a bad guy. So we get him, but he's not reacting to Megatron. I mean, they're not reacting together to each other. So so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to film this all in one big, long, swooping, two-minute long take, but because it ain't that long anyway. So yeah. So we got Megs. And I'm just going to keep rolling. And we have Megs, and the Megs is commenting. Change the background to match more of the city. What's going on? Okay. I'm going to pause it. Okay, this is going to be one unbroken take, but you're going to take this unbroken take and make it into a minute and a half of, of fun stuff during the brawl that's going on. So this is going to be one unbroken, basically I'm going to do a line rama with Decepticons and Autobots, commenting on the fight going around them. And we're going to start with Dragstrip, who was in one of the other scenes hanging out with one of the other guys. But we're just going to, each one we're just going to see individually doing a line. That's what I'm doing. So they can be with the other one or not. But when you, when I go across, all the way across all of them, for the whole minute, minute and a half, two. Uh, the the gag is that each one will have something to say during the boss fight, ending with the very last one making a snarky comment. So 